Welcome back. This is Crossbeats Production. You're here with Nate to Wait. Now, I thought I'd just do this quick video on how I mix my low end in a track. I think this probably is one of the biggest, maybe not a secret, but maybe the biggest misunderstood or the biggest misused, I guess, technique that people could use if they were going to mix their low end on a track. Now, I kind of found out about this just through research and, and understanding different things within the mix and kind of, you know, trial and error. But there's two things that are really crucial to get right on your mix. And pretty much those two things are your low end and making sure that other frequencies within other parts of the uh, spectrum aren't interfering with each other. Um, but the, the main basic thing that I do with my low end, the first thing before anything else, um, is kind of just get those two the bass, for example, bass guitar, or it could be a bass synth or whatever it might be. I'll get that and I'll mix that with the kick or the kick drum within the mix. So, I mean, a lot of the time, if you don't get these things right, your mixes just don't sound right. They sound either over bassy or too flabby or the kick doesn't quite sit right or whatever it might be. I just found that this is really a really good cheat or a hack to get your bass sitting right. So, I'll just show you kind of what I do and give you a real quick explanation on how it works just so you know you don't have to spend too much time watching this video but I just want to really help people out there that are starting to learn how to mix and give them a really key crucial tip that they can understand what to do. So as you can see I've got one EQ here, a second EQ here. So this EQ is for my kick, now this EQ is for my bass end, my low end, <coughs> excuse me, my bass guitar which is not really a bass guitar, it's just kind of a bassy kind of thing. Actually, it was a bass guitar that I played within a uh, VST instrument. Um, so the the main things I tried to do is I created a shelf within the bass to keep this low end that was a little bit overpowering. I created that to reduce it. Then if you see this, I created like a little bump here. Now I've noticed that my kick, the frequencies that are really kind of, you know, sticking out there that are that are part of this frequency that I'm looking for are in this area here, so about 110 hertz approximately. So I created this little bump here, which if you can see, it's kind of in the same area and that takes out that frequency. And then I've added that back into this kick drum here. I've also added some high end just to give it some extra high end because I wanted to, the kick to stick out. Um, and then I took out the really high end stuff that's not necessary for the kick. And I've pretty much left that on the, the bass instrument. So if I just play these two together, you probably need headphones to hear this because it is low end frequencies that I'm playing. So just so you know, uh, maybe just assemble some headphones or, or get some good studio monitors with a sub possibly. Um, before I do that though, I want to point out one thing. Now I've always got usually my drums set into a bus. So if you can see all of these things in red, they're my drum, my drum kit actually. And then I'd have my bass kind of nearby so I can see that that's sort of where my kick is. And I understand then when I'm looking at it straight away, I know where everything's positioned. Everything's color coded and pretty much labeled how I want it to be as well. Labeling is kind of crucial. That's really important to know so you don't waste time trying to find stuff and, and have to mess around. Um, the other thing I want to point out as well is, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is with the instruments within Studio One 3, um, I'm pretty sure you might be able to do this with the previous Studio Ones and even other DAWs. I'm sure you can do the same thing. But I know for sure that this is a great feature within Studio One. So I'll just quickly um, show you what I do. So if I highlight all these tracks, for example, and before I start mixing, I get all the levels, I'd pull them down all the way to whatever level I want it to be at. So it's around about, let me just get that back to zero. So what I'm looking for is a level that's kind of around about minus 18 on the scale here. So I would set this up on my um, final mix bus here and I'd set that scale to minus 18. I'd set the sen sensitivity down a bit just so it's um, you know slower to react and the needle stays in the position that it originally hit when it first hit the kick or whatever was playing. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm getting a cold. Again. <laughs> um, so it's coming into winter here in, in Australia so I guess that's probably why. But anyway, um, so pretty much the, the things that I wanted to point out, like I said, um, I, I'd first create that bus. So I'd have a you know, a compressor on my drum bus, which I'll, I'll use a bit more later on. But that sort of is the needle is going to be moving a little bit, not too much. 
and then I have comp a compressor on my mix bus. So this mix bus is separate to this final out bus here. So all of my tracks are going to that mix bus. If you can see, they're all going to mix bus except for my drum kits here. Um, and that's created quite simply. So if you want to know, you can highlight all your tracks that you want to highlight and you create add a bus to the channel. And then when, when you add that bus, it'll add a separate bus and it may not immediately label them all what you want to, but all you need to do is click on here. And then once you've got this track labeled, just click on mix bus on each track and then it'll go straight to that. Um, <coughs> All right, so let's get to the reason why I made this video. So with the low end, right, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm, talk what I'm talking about. So first thing, put this in mono and just listen to your track in mono at very low volumes. So when I say low, I'm talking about like that low enough where you could quite easily talk over the volume of the track. Okay, so if you just listen to the low end, and um, pay attention to the kick and the bass together and see how they kind of fit together. Now this isn't finished, but this is just a technique I want to show you. Okay, so that's the bass. Now you can see it's kind of sitting there, it's on its own right now. And then when the kick comes in, watch this. Okay, so, <coughs> excuse me, fire up. Wrecking this video by coughing all over it. Okay, so you'll watch this compressor. This is the compressor that I'm using to mix the two together. And you can do this in a number of different ways. And I might make another video about this because there's just so many different things, so many aspects to mixing that people just don't, you know, take into consideration when they're doing or they just don't know about it. But you can mix this on a parallel if you want. And there's a really really cool thing of doing like like i'll show you what i'm talking about when i say parallel so parallel compression is is basically a mixture of the original signal and a mixture of the signal you're compressing so if i was to do parallel which i have done on this track you can see here there's a little mixing it's 86 percent so i've dragged that down a little bit just to give it a bit of the original track and mostly compressed now you can do the same thing with your um your mix bus Basically, the way you achieve that, it's not with the compressor that's, you know, basically here, but you can achieve the same thing um, by basically setting up your compressor in this same scenario where you could send all of your bass instruments to your mix bus if you want to create this as a as just a bass uh, compression and then send the rest of the tracks to another mix bus, creating another bus, and then blend them all together. That's one way of doing it. <clears throat> On this particular one, so far, I haven't done that because I haven't needed to, but maybe later on I will. And um, you can definitely, you know, just hit the compression on this one pretty hard and then send just your low end into that so it's all solid and just the low end of your track is solid and then introduce other instruments into that, you know, for example, your snare or whatever it might be, um, you know, it could be a piano or whatever it is that you've got going on in your track. Um, I hope this isn't confusing. If it is, ask me questions in the comments, make comments about it. And, you know, also just remember to, to like this and please subscribe to the channel because this is the reason why I keep doing these videos because I've got so much more. Um, I guess I've had a lot of people subscribe to my channel in the last couple of weeks and it's really encouraging to see that I'm helping people. So uh, remember to hit that thumbs up button. That really helps me out a lot. And I just wanted to say thanks for tuning in and peace.